Welcome to the AWC uh, TV podcast, and uh, today we're going to be featuring uh, from ABC Window Cleaning Supply, Jacob Wallace, uh, and we're going to be talking about today an interesting topic you're going to pay attention to, and that's email automation. So, Jacob, thanks for being on board today. We appreciate uh, you being with us. Oh, definitely. Thanks for having me. So, uh, what I really like about our topic today is um, you're, uh, you know, obviously you work for a window cleaning supply uh, company and uh, owners of that, but uh, you're not just about just supplies. You're also about helping uh, your customers, uh, window cleaners, uh, gain more knowledge and how to build their business. Yeah, I think so. Uh, if we have a lot of uh, knowledge just from the things that we have to do as a business, and then anything we can do to help our customers grow is good for them, and then ultimately means they're gonna buy more squeegees from us. So it's pretty win-win. It's, yeah, I can see that definitely. So, um, so email automation, um, give us just a little, some people may not even know what that term means. So uh, tell us a little bit, what's, what's the definition of that? Yeah, so um, uh, probably most people watching this do some level of email marketing. Uh, and so that's just where you're sending um, timely messages out to usually a large group of people at once uh, and you're promoting something about your business basically. Um, and then you're probably also doing uh, one-off kind of communications based on some sort of template. So for example, after you finish a job, you might send the customer uh, an email asking them to review you on Google or Yelp or, or whatever. Um, and so, it's the same sort of message over and over, but it's not necessarily being sent all at once in a bulk to a bunch of people. Um, so uh, probably most people are doing some level of email marketing uh, and already, you know, I don't have to necessarily sell you on the benefits of, of email marketing. But the next step uh, of, on top of that that um, we're gonna talk about is automation. So a lot of the email marketing tasks that people are doing are repetitive and so you know they're like load the template if you're in gmail for example open up my canned response click send open up my canned response click send and so you find yourself doing the same sort of task over and over and over and so what we're talking about is adding the automation component to that which computers are really good at so if we're going to be doing the same sort of thing over and over let's get a computer to do that and then instead we can spend our time cleaning more windows or focusing on hiring or, you know, spending time with our family or whatever. Yeah. So um, those that might not be uh, familiar with uh, even the first step of that, maybe they're not even doing um, the mass emails or anything. What would be your advice? What are some of the programs that a person might look at to try to uh, automate some of that? Yeah, uh, there's, there's a ton out there. Uh, one of my favorites is called MailChimp. And it has a free plan, so you know anybody can get started. The interface is pretty user friendly, um, so so it's kind of an easy one to get going on. Uh, and you don't need to have a gigantic list; you can just start adding, you know, your customers that are coming in uh, to this list. Um, so I'd probably start there, and then I some people may already have some tools like this that they're not aware that they have. Um, so like, for example, uh, I've seen a tool out there called House Call Pro, which is a software a lot of people use to, um, you know, schedule and, and build their customers and those sorts of things. Um, some of those tools actually have email marketing um, like built into them. So House Call Pro, for example, already has a tool for automatically sending follow up messages to people after you've completed a job. And so it's just like, uh, you open up that program and you can set triggers like, uh, you know, five days after I mark job as finished, send this email to customer. Um, but if, if you're using something like QuickBooks uh, online, it tends to not have as robust of tools like that. Um, I would definitely check out MailChimp. Yeah. And so really we can be talking about uh, two different things. So one way we could use email automation is to gain new customers. So maybe we have a, uh, a list, we buy an email list or something from, from whatever source, or we have it and so we're trying to gain people. So we're, we're basically what I call, we're hitting them constantly with our message 
and uh, we, we don't want to sit at a computer doing that, so we just automate that process. That's one way, right? That's one way, yeah. All right, and then the other way is, as you're talking about in the CRM, is to keep in contact with a current customer. So it could be thank yous, that you could track it maybe six months later, you could say, hey, I wanna go ahead and send an email. It's been six months since we've cleaned your windows, if it's a residential customer. So it's, it's really keeping that, uh, that customer close and keeping in contact with them. Right, so, uh, so the, on the, the first example that you mentioned, you're sending out to a list of bulk people. Uh, the automation doesn't shine quite as well there because you're still going to have to put together that message and you're likely not sending the same message over and over again. You're, so like, for example, you're saying, these are my spring specials for uh, cleaning or these are my fall specials for gutter cleaning. Um, you'll tend to customize that message each time you're going to send it and then you'll send it to your entire list. Um, where automation shines maybe a little bit better is on that CRM side that you mentioned, where you are going to send the same sorts of emails to people a lot. So um, when you get a new uh, lead on your website, for example, somebody wants you to come out and do a quote, you could have an automated message that sends them some like frequently asked questions, uh, as well as a message that you'll be back to them within 24 hours, something like that. Uh, when you finish a job, you can have the email go out right away that says, um, you know, how did you like everything? Let us know. Please rate us on Google. Uh, and then another cool one is you can set messages based on the frequency that you think you would be cleaning a job. So like, let's say you got a job that was four times a year. You could automate that they'll receive a message, you know, a week before the next time that you should be cleaning, reminding them to schedule or reminding them that you're gonna be out automatically or something like that. Um, and then maybe the last example I kind of wrote down before we started talking um, was maybe a customer win back. So if you used to have somebody that cleans you know, four times a year, but you haven't heard from them in six months, you can have it automatically start them on a message series saying something like, we missed you, come back to us, here's a coupon, you know, those sorts of things. Yeah, very nice. One of the nice things in the CRM is to keep constant contact with your customers because in most markets, uh, you have competitors and they're probably trying to reach that same customer as well. So you need to kind of keep contact with your customers, make sure that they're in tune with what you're doing. Yeah, for sure. And, and you know, Mike, that like when you have a small list of customers, it's not that hard to you know, have a very personal touch with all of them. But as your business grows, you know, you can't really scale that sort of level of communication, but with email automation, you can. Uh, and so you can make sure that you're still uh, communicating with your customers in a timely way, even if you have, you know, hundreds or thousands of customers. Yeah. Jacob, give us an example, if, if you don't mind, if you, if you don't want to do this, just say, but um, at, at ABC there, what are some ways that you've implemented uh, this automation and you see some success at it? Yeah, a couple of ways. So um, we often have people who will add things to their cart on our store, and then they'll end up leaving before purchasing. Um, and so we can set up an email that goes out to them, you know, after a certain amount of time. Uh, I think we have it set maybe for like 45 minutes or something like that, that emails them saying, hey, did you, were you having any trouble? And then we know, you know, the, the main reasons that people end up not completing an order. So we can kind of address those in the email. Um, and then we can have a link for them to be able to easily finish their order if they're ready. Uh, so that's one example. Uh, another example, this, this actually is one of my favorite ones, even though it's maybe not the sexiest, is uh, when somebody purchases a water fed system or a water fed pole. Um, you know, it's kind of a big purchase and for a lot of people, it's kind of complicated and new. Uh, you know, it's not like the most complicated thing in the world, but it's a learning curve to it. So we'll have an email that goes out the same day that they purchase it, that has a link to their quick start guide and their manual and some videos about how to change filters and things like that. Uh, and so that way you're making sure that people are, uh, you know, immediately getting the resources you know will be helpful to them without anybody here having to remember to do that. Yeah, very good. Yeah, some nice ways. So it, 
probably you need one that goes out that says, hey, did you just not know how to delete this in the cart? <laughs> <laughs> that would be for me. <laughs> yeah, it's still in there because I didn't know how to delete it. <laughs> yeah. Well, and actually, you know, that one kind of funny note about that is uh, anytime you're doing email automation, you should be careful not to annoy your customers too much. So uh, like we could set it so that we'll send you an email about your abandoned cart every uh, you know, 30 minutes for the next two weeks. Yeah. And, and nobody wants that. Right. Right. Now that's, that's right. So we don't want to be annoying with it, but we do want some sort of persistence. How often would you recommend, uh, so we, if we're dealing with a, a CRM system and we're trying to touch our, our customers, um, how often would you recommend uh, touching them so that they're not annoying? Uh, yeah, a couple of thoughts around that. One is just think how often you would want to be communicated with by, by a company, like, you know, a contractor that works at your house or something, um, you know, and kind of set that as a little bit of a guideline for yourself. Um, and then maybe a second thought around that is think how many times that you can actually add value to somebody. So there's a point where you're sending people valuable information like their quick start guide, maybe their manual or a follow up asking how their job went. But then you can quickly enter the realm where you're no longer providing them any new value from the emails that you're sending them. You're just sending them, you know, fluff or nonsense or spam potentially. Um, so if you find that the emails you're sending really aren't very valuable to anybody, then um, stop it, basically. Uh, but I would definitely say you shouldn't be emailing people um, like so transactional emails, such as here's a copy of your receipt. There really isn't a limit to those. Um, but marketing types of messages, um, I think people would generally get annoyed if you were sending more than one a week, maybe. It, it's a hard question to answer because it varies a lot by what you're doing, but like with window cleaning, really how much do you have to communicate to your customers that, you know, do you really have more to say than could be said, you know, once a quarter even? Yeah. So, you know, that kind of goes contrary to, you know, it used to be, I think this has changed and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I remember reading something about, um, you know, it would talk about touches and how many times you'd have to touch somebody to motivate them to action. And it used to be it would take about three touches before you could, you know, get them to, to buy or, or whatever the, the action, desired action was. And somebody said now that's changed to like 30. It's not three anymore, it's 30. And so using kind of what you're saying though, if we're, there's really a, a, a balancing act there, right? Uh, of course, these are already established customers that we're talking about. But even with new, I mean, I get, I may get so many emails. I probably get 250 emails a day, easy, yeah, you know. Yeah, tell me about And most of it's just click, click, you know, delete, delete, delete. But um, it, it, there is a fine line there between what's working in advertising and what's annoying people. <laughs> yeah, and you know, uh, I'm not sure that what the number of touches is, but you know, I'm certain you're right. It's increased, and if it really is 30, you know, the and then you start increasing the amount of emails you're sending uh, in response to that, you're just contributing to that number going up. Um, so I try to follow more of a golden rule of marketing and I don't wanna like market to people in ways that I wouldn't want to be marketed to. Um, but uh, I guess one other note on that is it's very contextual. So uh, if you know we're talking about those transactional emails I mentioned, you know, those are relevant and important. And so when you, like in our case, you place an order with us, we'll send you an order confirmation. And then later when the order ships, we'll send you tracking information. So that's two emails in the same day, but both of those are really important and shouldn't really be annoying anybody. Yeah, yeah, very good. So person's not doing this yet, um, but they're like, man, I just listened to this podcast and I, I wanna do this, I need to do this. Uh, what would be some steps then? What would they what would they need to look at first to maybe start start going down this road? Yeah, so I would number one pick a software to use. So Mailchimp, for example. Um, number two, I'd start building my list. So uh, every new customer that I had, I would 
start entering them into into my list on MailChimp. Um, and then if I have permission, I would uh, hopefully add old customers as well. And then I guess number three is I would just take baby steps because all of this can seem really overwhelming. And even like in our company, we have a list of email automations that we'd like to create that we haven't gotten around to. Um, and it, it's a fairly extensive list. So, um, you know, don't, don't be overwhelmed. Just pick the ones that are going to be most impactful and get started. So like in my mind, probably the single best one you could do, or maybe the single two best I'll say is a automated email that goes out to somebody when they fill out a quote request on your website and then an automated follow up after you finish the job. Yeah, those are two nice things. With uh, MailChimp or some of the other ones that are out there, um, are there any rules or guidelines that a person needs to be aware of about uh, spam or unsolicited type emails or anything like that? Uh, anything they need to be aware of? Yeah, so you, uh, I mean, you shouldn't email anybody that you don't think has given you permission. So that can get a little hazy, um, but like if they sign up on your website and click a box that says, yes, go ahead and email me, you're good to go. But sometimes uh, with verbal type of things, uh, that can be a gray area. Uh, but basically, you should be pretty sure that the people you're emailing um, would be interested in the email you're sending. Yeah. Um, otherwise, if you get marked as spam too much, um, it can start to hurt your your domain, basically. So if if uh, if the powers that be, um, I, I'm not sure who they all are, but like Google and, and other people who are in the internet world, um, start to perceive that your company is spammy, um, they'll start to send emails from your company to spam and people will never see them. Yeah. yeah. So, so that's kind of your risk if you get too spammy. Um, and there's lots of great articles out there. Um, you know, MailChimp included has tons of resources about making sure your emails are relevant and compliant and aren't going to be marked as spam. Yeah. Very good, and I think even the the Mailchimp and uh, some of the other ones, they, they'll actually if you're if you're getting if you're getting too spammy or, or too many unsolicited back, they actually crack down on you as well. So they do because you can hurt them because uh, they you know manage tons of people's emails, and if your sender score starts to go down, it can actually affect them overall. So so yeah, they're pretty militant about it, and some even um, I think eye contact possibly maybe MailChimp, they'll like check your message for their own private spam score before they'll let you send it. And if, if they don't think it's up to snuff, some of them won't even let you send the email. Yeah, yeah. So uh, some things to think about, but uh, definitely it's a task that uh, you, you know, you shouldn't, you, if, if you have a large volume of business that's going on, um, it's certainly a way that can uh, take you away from a, a menial task of, you know, sending out individual emails, individual thank yous, individual thank you for that quote, or, you know, uh, even a, a process like uh, yours in your business where you're able to send them out information that's an instructional type information uh, after the purchase. So uh, great stuff, Josh. We really appreciate uh, your insight and uh, you're helping uh, window cleaners out, trying to help them build their businesses up. And uh, we thank you for being on board today. Uh, yeah, no problem at all. Have a good one, Mike. All right, talk to you soon. Stay tuned for our next episode of AWC TV by following us on YouTube, Facebook, or our website, awcmag.com.